Well, it's a hot day today, but you're gonna get something that some of you, if you watch the shorts, have been waiting on for quite a while. Today, that 410, 416, we're gonna fire it up on the run stand. <laughs> job <laughs> as you can see it's a great day to fire something up on a run stand we're right at 100, 100 degrees. degrees inside the shop which is why when i do stuff like this i like to roll them out of the door you know what i mean i don't need any more heat in here so you're gonna get kind of a two for one this is the 416 cubic inch fe that we've got here uh three 398 stroke 4080 bore uh pretty close to a square motor uh and she's adorned with all elder brock has to offer elder brock dress up kit elder brock rpm intake elder brock rpm heads elder brock water pump and even somewhere on here it says oh uh, there it is if we can focus focus by Elderbrock. Um, <clears throat> Moroso pan. Basically, it's a Ford block. It's got a comp cams roller cam in it. Uh, it should it should be a pretty good motor. And the other you're going to get is a lot of people have asked me about this run stand. Uh, this is a run stand they sell at uh, Summit. It is kind of a generic run stand. It, uh, it's made to fit anything, but you've got to do a couple of tweaks to it to run a Ford motor on it, and I'll show you what those One are. One of the things you have to do when you put a Ford motor on a stand like this is GM motors and probably some others are made so the starter bolts to the block. Fords do not do that. They bolt to the bell housing so you have two options one you can put a bell housing on the back of the engine and bolt bell housing and all to the stand but what if you don't have a bell housing well you got to get kind of creative as we like to do around here and you make something like this this is 316 steel plate and i cut it so this bolts to the block this pin, this right here, is one of the alignment pins for the bell housing. These two, or maybe it's this one. Anyway, uh, these two bolt to the block. That one is an alignment pin. And then up here, it bolts to the block. And then your starter bolts bolt here and these three. And all you have to do is put a flywheel on the back of it and you can bolt a starter right to this plate and everything lines up like it should. So that's one of the little things, and I'll show it to you when we get ready to bolt it on. That's one of the little things that you have to uh, have to do. But other than that, the stand will pretty much run it the way it's supposed to. Well, guys, as you can see, it got laid on me. It's pretty dark out there. And uh, the engine, well, it's, it's ready to fire up. There she is, ready to fire up. I used some fender well headers for my run stand. It is ready to fire up uh and make its first rumble to life but it's too late and i have a pretty good relationship with my neighbors and i don't want to screw it up by firing that beast up late at night the day got away from me and it happened see it's both a blessing and a curse when you do the same thing all the time like all i do is fe's pretty much every once in a while i'll touch something else but i'm pretty much an fe guy that's why people come to me for an FEs. But I'm also a four-speed guy. So, I guess in hindsight, I could have done it a different way, and I'll tell you that in a second. But when it comes to putting this thing together, and I put the flex plate on the back of it, I didn't have any bolts. Uh, the, the flywheel that you use with a manual is longer. And an FE along with some other Fords, use a 
oddball, let's call it, bolt. It's a 7 16 by 20. Um, and they're not an easy bolt to find short. You can find them all day long, an inch or longer. But these need to be about a half inch. <laughs> so it became a little debacle getting the correct bolts. All that's solved now and it's done. It's just one of those things where I didn't even think about that. Uh, again, I do manuals all the time. And now in hindsight, as I'm sitting here thinking about it, what I should have done was because all I'm doing is cranking it up on a run stand. I should have just put a flywheel on it and fired it up with a flywheel. That's what I should have done. Should have, could have, would have, but the day's gone now. So first thing in the morning, uh, be Friday, Friday morning. First thing we're going to do is, uh, we're going to make that the alarm clock around here. <laughs> we're going to fire up in that crisp warm air or cool air and uh, let it make some racket. Whew, I'm both excited and nervous. I always get nervous when I fire one up for the first time. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's an engine that was come out of a running car and I didn't get to hear it run before it was pulled out. The first time I crank an engine, I'm always a little nervous. Not going to lie about it. I always have been and I always will be. But this one's ready to fire up. Full roller motor. We don't really have to worry about any kind of break-in process, really, truly. Um, we just want to make sure that it doesn't make any noise that it's not, uh, that it's not supposed to make. And we want to make sure it makes all the noises that it does supposed to make. Yeah. We'll see y'all in the morning. Okay, so quick story time with Bobby here before we continue our video. As you can see, it's late in the evening now. I wanted to give a little bit of a preemptive word before you see the next bit of footage. Uh, so you know exactly what happened. So the way I start a motor for the first time is... What I found the easiest for me, you don't have to do it this way. Um, I will turn the balancer to about 10 degrees. I will stab the distributor in so it points at the number one right there. And I find that that's generally close enough to make it start. That's the way I start one. So what was done with this engine is the... Oil system was primed, saying we had good oil pressure, and then turned the crank to 10 degrees, pushed the button, fired the engine up, and that's the footage you're about to see. Now, it needed a timing set to run appropriately, so you will hear it sound a little lazy and a little popping coming out of exhaust. Well, the timing's not set. So, I had my buddy here with me, and I'd done what anybody would do that's trying to film a YouTube video. I picked my phone up, because I film with my phone, as most of you know. And... Uh, recorded the engine getting dialed in a little bit well i then hit the button to stop it and i stuck my phone in my back pocket through the editing process 
I realize the footage I have of the engine running is the first initial fire before we set everything. There is no footage of it being tuned in, dialed in. But there is, however, about five minutes of video of the inside of my back pocket. So apparently, what I did was not hit the record button, stand there and stare through my phone at the engine, and then hit the record button and stuck it in my back pocket when I thought I was stopping recording. So with that being said, enjoy about 10 seconds of the motor firing up and running, but needing tuned. And uh, yeah, that's, that's just how things go around here. We all make mistakes. We all screw up, and that's just the way it happens. Um, I did not know this happened until the editing process. So, uh, I've already started disassembling everything off the run stand to get the engine ready for the vehicle. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's a, <laughs> I'm not about to put everything back together just to crank it up again. So, we will just leave it to the folks that this engine is going to, to do a video of the engine running in the car. <laughs> and uh, let y'all enjoy that for your viewing pleasure. When I strap down the Galaxy, they all seem to rub a little bit on the rear bumper of it. And after a thousand miles on the rear bumper. Oh, yeah. 
That was a heck of a time to look. Huh? That was a heck of a time to look. <laughs> well, you got the down for it, man. You're going to pick up some traction and some. Uh... Oh, wait a minute. That's what we're talking about. Oh, you know. oh yeah. Hot move easier. Hot move easier with strap on. Hey, oh, yeah. look at us. Keep the comments to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I got a high school education. Uh -huh. There's a problem. Look at us. Almost like we knew what we were doing. Yeah. I guess what we thought about it was five or ten minutes. Mm -hmm. this boy. All right, so two things. Uh, one, I apologize for the lost footage. Um, what can I say? Mistakes happen, and when you're trying to get something done, they happen easier. And I ended up with some good footage of the inside of my back pocket. But the engine uh, ran, sounded good, made killer oil pressure, uh, a little time and tweak, and it really is a good, healthy engine, and I think it's going to be something that will service them for a lot of years to come. It is going in their 66 Ford Fairlane, um, and as you've seen in the footage, we met them along the road, uh, delivered the engine to them. It is now in their hands, and if they need it, I am here, and I'm glad to uh, drive down and help them uh, Get it installed if need be, but uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing some footage from them of that car together and running. Uh, it's going to be an amazing project. I wish, in hindsight, I could have went back. Uh, I would have checked the footage first and went back and fired the motor up again for all of you to hear it run, but um, this was a bit of a time crunch. We of course, fired it up and had it running last night, knowing that we were going, or yesterday morning, knowing that we were going to deliver it this morning. So uh, it was one of those fired up, run it, get it fairly close, and just unbolt it, get it on the engine cradle, get it loaded up so it could go. Because at the end of the day, just like you would, you know you're going to tune it to your vehicle a little bit. So getting it dialed into perfection was not necessarily the goal this time. It was to make them a good, healthy running engine, and that's what we've done for them. And we're on to the next one. The next one for us is Power Tour. Uh, we actually leave out in the morning for Power Tour, so I probably should start working on the car we're going to take now. <sighs> yeah, I mean, I got like eight hours to put it together and get it, get it dialed in. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I don't. Um, yeah. Uh, God bless you. I hope the Lord blesses you more today than he did yesterday. Him be all the glory. And uh, we'll see you guys on Power Tour. <laughs>